Hi, I'm Kerry Southorn of Leadership Radio. Thanks for stopping by today, and if you end up enjoying our video, give us the old thumbs up. So, let's talk some leadership. The topic of our conversation is how to conduct a good meeting. A little bit later on, we're going to have a clip featuring Dr. Virgil Schmidt of Texas. But in the meantime, I'd like to make a few comments on the subject of meetings. First of all, I think a leader needs to ask themselves, is this meeting really necessary? Too many meetings might be a sign that a leader is somewhat unsure of themselves, or it may be an indication that he or she is having trouble delegating to others. But if there must be a meeting, there are two things to keep in mind that are absolutely critical. The first one is start on time. We've all been to meetings where you get there five or ten minutes early and as the time for the start arrives, the organizer of the meeting looks around and says, well, we're just going to wait a few minutes until a few more people arrive. Fatal mistake. What you are saying to the people who are already there is you don't matter as much as the latecomers. And the result of that is going to be more latecomers next time. So number one, start on time. Number two, finish on time. And I'm amazed uh, with the number of virtual meetings that are going on, webinars and Zoom meetings and what have you, that the organizers don't keep these two principles in mind. But I think they're vitally important. So, so that's enough for me. Let's now go into the dialogue with Dr. Virgil Schmidt. And uh, every leader, uh, whether it be a big or small organization, has to get involved with meetings from time to time. Uh, I love the quote from, I think it was Thomas Sowell, something to the effect that uh, anybody who enjoys meetings should never be put in charge of anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of like that. But nonetheless, meetings are necessary. What are maybe a couple pitfalls to avoid when it comes to meetings as a leader? Well, Gary, the first thing I would point out is that if you are going to lead a meeting, you cannot delegate the chair to anybody else. Um, uh, some folks like to lead from the side or lead from behind, as we heard for a few years here. Uh, mm -hmm. those, those positions don't work well. So I think you need to be in a position where you've got the authority to actually control a meeting. And then I would say, uh, make sure you don't allow any member of the committee to pontificate on any subject, even if it's on target, because uh, that tends to wear everybody down and folks get off track and then they lose interest. And you want your meetings to be short and crisp and to the point, and then you can evaluate and assess it afterwards and, uh, and lead really productive committee meetings. <laughs> when Virgil and I were both much younger men, we were in a meeting together and there was one fellow who was totally dominating the conversation. He just couldn't shut up. And finally, Virgil couldn't take it any longer. And he said, did we come here to get some things done or just to exercise our jaw muscles? Well, as you can imagine, things settled down pretty quickly after that. <laughs>